you Celeste, thank you Art, thank you musicians, thank you Tony and Rodney and our practitioners holding High Watch. And thank you for being here today. This may not be the easiest day to be at the Center for Spiritual Living, but my guess is that the students are here. Not just the people who want to, not just the people who want to go to the uh, Prosperity Church, which is what we're called around town. Or not just the people who want to have a happy day without having to do anything for it. These are my students. And this is when we look at what the science of mind means all the time. There's a, a wonderful uh, minister named Robert Bitzer, and he used to say, we do not sacrifice principle even on special occasions. You cannot hear me, am I not? No, it's not. Right. Not on? No, no. no. Well, it's a new, it's a new chord. There we go. Yeah, okay. So we do not sacrifice principle even on special occasions, even when it's not convenient, even when maybe we would rather be able to jump into something that isn't God is all that there is and everything is always perfect when we might be tempted to say, God is all that there is for the cool people. <laughs> God is all that there is for the spiritually enlightened ones. But then those others over there in the darkness, they can't be God. How is that possible? But the truth is, is that either God is all that there is or it isn't. And frankly, with the emergence of quantum physics, because I, I, I love the scientific aspect of this, with the emergence of quantum physics and the concept that in order for a unified field to be one, it must be present in its totality at every point, simultaneously. <coughs> in order for a unified field to be one, it must be present in its totality at every point, all at the same time, simultaneously. So you cannot have God is over here with us, because we're spiritual. And God is not over here with them, because they're dirty, rotten, rabbit fratchets. You can't have that. If that were to be true for even a nanosecond, time and space would not exist. And we would not be here. Some people take exception to the way that I start the celebrations. I know that God is in this place because we are here. And people say, well, Barbara, that is just a completely egomaniac perspective that somehow the existence of the divine is contingent upon me. It is. It is. In order for God to be, I must be. And in order for God to be, you must be. Otherwise, it isn't. And we aren't. And there's no conversation. So I heard a quote from the Dalai Lama this week. And he said... When thing, he said, this is an old Tibetan quote. When things are difficult, then let yourself be happy. Go Dolly. <laughs> when things are difficult, that's the time to let yourself be happy. And you know, a lot of people think that if things are difficult, they are required to be bummed out. As if that's going to happen. Oh, it's just terrible. It's just, oh, ain't it awful. When some people are experiencing terminal illness, what a lot of the hospice people have discovered is that the people in the family and the people in the, in the house, they want to be really quiet. And they don't want the children to make noise and have fun because Aunt Susie is dying. So we all have to pull it in and shrink and hold back. And the, the, what has been found is that the person who's making their transition is craving life. They want the noise. They want the children jumping up and down on the bed. They want chaos. They want life around them. But somehow we have this social idea that says if something is not working out the way we thought it was going to, then we need to somehow pull our energy in. 
and feel bad. The problem with that is that if we pull our energy in and feel bad, we are not helping. We are not helping at all. For that matter, we are reinforcing the difficulty. And some people say, oh, Barbara, I don't have difficulty in my life. You know, you taught me to treat with ease and grace. And so everything happens in ease and grace. Well, you are far beyond me then. <laughs> because I find that at times my life is difficult. And that doesn't mean it's wrong. That doesn't mean that I'm struggling or suffering. It's just difficult. We were out in the, the hole on the other side of the parking lot yesterday, banging on concrete with sledgehammers and these big pieces of, of steel. That was difficult. There's nothing wrong with that. For that matter, it all worked out really well. But sometimes in life, there are things that we create. People, people want to change. They want to have their life shift, but they don't want to go through growing pains in the process. They want to be able to have the outer change without changing inside. And I don't know if you've noticed, but the whole world is changing right now. If you look outside at those trees and those shrubs, they are busting out. And isn't it a nice, sweet, happy thought to think, oh, they're just singing in their joy. I don't know that they are. They may be saying, ow, ooh, oh, oh, oh. They may be going like that. I don't know. But I know that when I've demonstrated great change in my life, sometimes it's been, ow, ooh, oh, like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. And so the Dalai Lama says, when things are difficult, then let yourself be happy. Infuse that experience with joy. Infuse it with happiness. Infuse it with energy. Lift it up. Ernest Holmes used to quote often wrong. He said, never quote him on quotes. <laughs> but he used to quote Sri Aurobindo. And Sri Aurobindo said, transcendence transmutes. It does not rectify. If you have two seeming opposites, you don't want to fix it, you don't want to work it out, you don't want to work a deal, you want to rise above it, you want to transcend that experience. I'm going to hold the mic. <laughs> you want to transcend that experience. You don't want to have to work out the seeming opposites because when you work out the seeming opposites, you're still dealing at the level of opposites. And the truth is, is that God is all that there is, no matter what. No matter what you hear on the news, no matter what the pictures are, no matter what the stories are. So what a week, huh? We started off with bombs in Boston. We moved to explosions in Texas. And I don't know about you, but I don't even have cable, and that's all I heard. That's all I heard was the special report and the manhunt and, and cheers out in the streets when someone was arrested. And then this entire town in Texas just kind of got wiped out. Wow. How do we stand in our teaching when things appear to be so out of principle? When it appears that God is not all that there is, but there are things out there that could jump into our lives and hurt us, triggering that fight or flight response. There might be a saber-toothed tiger out there somewhere. How do we stay clear that love is all that there is when sometimes people feel such a lack of love? And what I want us to know is that these are the times when we are called upon to transcend what other people are thinking. Because it does not help for us to buy in to the race consciousness that bad things can happen to good people. It doesn't help us to buy into the question of why. Why did this happen? It's none of our business why it happened. The only thing that is our business is what our response is to it. Why someone chose to be in a position where something happened is none of my business. And I find that when I focus on those questions, I'm just trying to get myself away from looking in the mirror and saying, Barbara, why do you respond that way? 
and what can you do to make it better? Because I know that I'm not making it better for anybody else in the world if I fall into fear or anger or judgment. I'm not going to make it any better. And are there children in the room or just a baby? I heard Michael Beckwith this week say, watching the news this week was very masturbatory. <laughs> can you say that? I think I can. I think it's a medical term. He said that, that that cycle of watching drama and needing to feed on the excitement of the manhunt and the special reports and the blinking lights and the talking heads and the, the interrupted programming, he said people get excited from that. Now, let's take a look in the mirror. Because I know that I used to love to watch CSI Miami. It excited me. I wanted to watch him catch him, catch the bad guy. Oh my gosh, what happened? Wait, rewind, I used to live there. <laughs> but I would find I got excited from that. One of the things that we've been talking about in our Monday night class as we study this mind-body connection and the way that we, we filter the world to satisfy that need for drama is that when we look at life and we become addicted to the emotional response of adrenaline, of neurotransmitters firing, and we get that hit, that rush of excitement from it, then we are looking for the fulfillment, the hit, the rush of the next experience of drama and excitement. And that's crazy. That's crazy. That'll make us sick. That'll hurt our relationships because we're always looking for the drama. Looking, looking, looking. And so we had an opportunity this week to look at drama. And I think that this is a wonderful time to be able to look at ourselves and say, how does that work for us? If we like it, maybe we need to go off of it. Maybe we need to, need, need to have a 12-step program at this center for Drama Anonymous. <laughs> drama Anonymous. How does it feel to be peaceful when other people are going crazy? There were some wonderful stories in it all this week. It seems to me that when things get difficult, humanity as a whole rises up. We rise up. We rise to the occasion. And so there were stories of people holding people at the marathon, just holding them, people that they'd never seen before, just holding them. There were stories of people running through the finish line and not stopping, but continuing to run to the hospital to give blood. There were stories about Google putting a, a finding list online of how to find your people. Stories about a fraternity that opened up and gave people couches to sleep on, beds to sleep in, food, things to drink, there's a story about a pizza parlor right there that opened up and tweeted, we have food and we have things to drink. And they opened up their doors and everything was free. The people who were there working stayed and worked hours longer than their shift. And the people that were home saw the tweet and came to work. And they gave it away. Because there is something within us that transcends the drama of it all. There is something within us that can lift us up above the muck and mire of it all and move into a different state. And then it's not about finding the bad guy. It's not about whether or not we're safe. It's about how can I give? How can I be in service? What can I do? And you can't do something if you're busy being afraid or if you're busy being angry. It's fascinating. The, the, the thing that happens in our brain when we are afraid is that the fight or flight response is triggered off. It happens in the limbic brain. Adrenaline courses through our system. And the body takes the blood and sends it out to the limbs so that we can either fight or flight. What happens is where it takes it from is our brain. Yeah. Yeah. So when we get angry, we get stupid. <laughs> right. 
When we get afraid, we get stupid. And then we can't do anything. If we can keep our wits about ourselves and say, I may not know what's really going on here, but I can trust that something is because I know that God is all that there is. If we can keep our wits about ourselves and stay in that place where our hearts are open and love is moving through us, then we can do something. Some guy's getting a boat out of all of this. Yeah, we can do something. We don't have to be hidden away in fear. Because what happens when we're afraid? What sets that up anyway? I'm fascinated with the human condition. It's like, why do we do all of this? How do we do all of this? When we have low self-esteem spiritually, when we feel like there are things that can hurt us, things that can take that which is ours away, things that can keep us from getting what we need, if we have low spiritual self-esteem, then we translate the world into an idea that can hurt us. Instead of realizing that we are powerful, creative, spiritual beings, alive and well on planet Earth, that God is all that there is, and that's the only place that we are going. We are all going to leave this planet sometime. I thought I was going to live forever. Well, you are, but your body's not. So we're all going to leave this planet sometime, and if one person chooses to leave in a certain way, who am I to say that's not okay? Who am I to say you should have stayed until you were 136 years old and that was supposed to be your path? No, it isn't. The only one that I have say over path is me. I don't have any say over what other people do. So when people choose to leave this experience, the only thing I can do is go, huh, wow, look at the way you left. You made a big splash. <laughs> Had a lot to say. Oh, well, they were only X number of years old. It's not my business. Powerful, creative, spiritual being, alive and well on planet Earth. My only business is to know that I am a point in, a, in the awareness of the divine mind of God as me. That's my only job, to see with God's eyes, to think with God mind, to love with God love. That's my only job. And so sometimes when we create things, because it's all our creation, when we create things collectively, it is our job to transcend the details of it even though it may be tempting. It may be tempting to get caught up in all of that emotion. And we may have people around us that want to be caught up in it and that want us to go down that path with them. It may be tempting, but it is our job to transcend and to lift that experience to a higher plane, whether we see it have any effect on the outside or not. It always has effect within us. The only one that we can change is the one in the mirror. And if we want to change the world, we must change ourselves. And sometimes that change isn't with ease and grace. People say, oh, it was senseless. I don't think so. I think it makes perfect sense. We are evolving in consciousness. We are in the communication age. But it doesn't change the fact that we have less war at this moment than any other time in history, less killing at this moment than any other time in history, less violence at this moment than any other time in history. We just hear about it faster, and we get to see it because of smartphones. It is our job to rise up into that awareness that the power and the presence of the divine is right where we are and right where everyone else is that it doesn't matter what it looks like, it doesn't matter what the story is, it doesn't matter what people are saying. That's our job. And if we have to pull back from the hits and the rushes of that adrenaline experience, from the excitement of it all, that's our job. If we have to go into our room and shut the door and chant the ohm, that's our job. To raise in consciousness so that as we experience these growing pains as human beings on planet Earth, we do it in a way that brings about the love and the peace and the joy that each of us knows is possible. 
I love that talk that I gave on the best future ever because it states beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are only decades out from everybody having enough, from people being able to live in this earth experience with water, with food, with time, with, with the, the medicines that some people need, basic vitamin A drops that will stop people from going blind. We are only decades out. And as I've often said in classes, when you put a seed in the ground, the very first thing that's going to come up is a little dirt. It's not the flower. It's not the leaf. It's a little dirt. So the only thing that's going on is that we as a human species are growing. We are growing. We are bursting out in bloom. And maybe this week we had a little dirt come up. Okay. But don't get caught up in it. Don't get hooked by it. Don't let your emotions go crazy. Don't turn yourself into a chemical factory that produces adrenaline and all of the byproducts of that. Transcend. Remember who you are. You are a powerful, creative, spiritual being, alive and well on planet Earth. God is all that there is. Love is the only reality. And we will work it all out. And so it is.